Two years later, or in early 1994, near Groundhog's Day, we get Sonic the Hedgehog 3. Not having enough money on me, all I could do was rent it, and... That was all I needed. The game takes place right after Sonic 2, with Sonic and Tails heading out to a floating island named Angel Island that crashed into the sea. Before they get there, Eggman is already planning to rebuild the Death Egg, and tells one of the locals that two bad characters are coming to the island. This turns out to be Knuckles, who falls for Eggman's lies, and apparently scares the Chaos Emeralds right out of Super Sonic, and takes them for himself. Wait, what's he doing? Unlike Sonic, I don't chuckle. Okay then. Well, it looks like you have to collect all the emeralds again, and stop Eggman. Again. Once again, many of the gameplay elements remain intact, with some slight changes and additions. The zones still have two acts each, but after the first act, you fight a sub-boss before you pass the act. Then continue from where you are, straight into the next act. You don't keep any rings, but you can hold on to any shields you still have. After the end of the second act, you'll get a cutscene that shows how you get to the next zone. This time, Sonic and Tails have their own ability. When jumping, press the button again and Sonic will do the insta-shield, which gives Sonic a little more attack range for a short time. Meanwhile, Tails can fly! And if you have a second person controlling Tails, you can have Tails give Sonic a lift to places he would have trouble getting to on his own. Oh, and you can also swim too, thanks to that. That might make you want to play as Tails, but Sonic gets two more abilities. New to the game are the elemental shields. Fire, water, and electric. Fire protects from fire, water stops you from drowning, and electric attracts rings. That's only if you're Tails. If you're Sonic, then you get all the basics, plus an extra ability instead of having your insta-shield. With fire, you can do a dash attack. With water, you can do a bounce. And with electric, you can do a double jump. Always do your best to avoid getting hit because you don't want to lose them. Sadly, the fire and electric shield don't work underwater, so keep that in mind. Collecting a certain amount of rings and going to the check marks takes you to a bonus stage that gives you rings, shields, and one-ups. Oh, you are looking for the bonus stage that has the Chaos Emeralds? Well, now all you have to do is find a giant ring hidden somewhere in the stage. I'm not sure how many are in the stages, but there should be about two to three of them in the stage. When you go through one, you'll go to the new bonus stage, the Sphere Grid. The objective here is to collect blue spheres and rings while avoiding red spheres. Every time you touch a blue sphere, it turns into a red sphere, and if you touch a red sphere, it ends the bonus stage. If you can collect 50 rings, you'll get a continue, which is useless since you can save in this game. And if you collect all the blue spheres, you'll earn a Chaos Emerald. I'm not sure how they got there since Knuckles had them at the beginning. Must have tripped and lost them somehow. The trick to getting the blue spheres faster is simple. If you see blue spheres that have a perimeter of at least 3x3, three three, then just get the spheres on the perimeter, and all the spheres in that group will turn into rings. The challenge here is, the longer you stay, the faster you move. Once you do this for all 7 bonus stages, you can become supersonic once again by collecting 50 rings, jumping, and doing the insta shield. But Tails still doesn't get anything from collecting them. Another reason why it's better to play as Sonic. The multiplayer mode also returns and even lets you play as Knuckles. Instead of beating the other player to the goal, it's see who can get the most laps. I have very little to say about this since I almost never played it. In fact, I don't think I've ever played anyone in it. I'm actually playing against myself, if you couldn't tell. So with these additions, why was I happy with just a rental? Let's go over that one step at a time. While there are only six zones in this game, I classify them under two categories. Easy and infuriating. Angel Island is the beginning level, so that's excusable for being easy. Hydro City never felt like much of a challenge either. Most of the time I just feel like I'm sitting back and watching Sonic go through the level by himself. Granted, it had felt like that sometimes on Chemical Plant, but it was never used this much. Or at least, it didn't feel like it was. Marble Garden Zone felt more like a gimmicky stage since you needed to use the spinner to get to certain areas. And it'll bypass most of the level for you. Carnival Night is one of the few levels that I died because it went over 10 minutes. And it wasn't because of the barrels that move by pressing up and down, because I actually figured that out right away, but because of the secret area that has a giant ring, capsules, and a trip back to the previous part of the zone. I hate these sick kicks that the designers get in torturing the players. Ice Cap felt too linear without any sense of challenge. And Launch Base seems a little too easy at times, but if you miss one of these zip liners, you go back to a previous part of the stage. So as you can tell, I don't play Sonic 3 that much because there aren't a lot of levels I like. But it doesn't end there. Sadly, there are two more problems I have. The last one is pointless. But this next one kind of goes against the majority. While it's nice that each act has its own slightly different soundtrack, I don't care for the music in this game. The only ones I kind of like are Angel Island and Ice Cap. Launch Base doesn't feel very intimidating for a final zone. Hydro City is okay, but I don't really get an adrenaline rush from it. 
and for me, it feels like it takes forever before it finally reaches its hook. Carnival Night sounds too staticky, and when I listen to Marble Garden, it feels like spikes going into my ears. After a while, I feel like I start to get a headache after listening to it. I had heard rumors that Michael Jackson had done some of the soundtracks for this game, but wait, 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 wait. Please understand that I mean this in no disrespect, just my honest opinion. That if he did, I would have called it his worst work. It sounds like it's trying to be high quality on a low-tech system. It pushed it beyond what it could handle, and doesn't sound like it should. Later I found a video on YouTube by QJimbo called Michael Jackson Sonic 3 that says in the annotations that Michael did work on some of the music in the game, but was not happy with the outcome because of its limitations, so he didn't want to be credited because he didn't want it to reflect his work. To that I have to say, wow! I fully admire, respect, and support that decision. Rest in peace, King of Pop. Rest in peace. Now this next part is pointless and I've gotten over it, but when I first saw his Sonic 3 sprite, at least when he's standing still, I didn't like it at all. Before you ask anything, no, I was not one of those people saying that Sonic should use the old look for Sonic 4. I expected them to use his newer model so it didn't bug me. What I don't like about his Sonic 3 sprite is, well, let me put it this way. His Sonic 2 look gave him this sort of can-do, fearless, better-not-get-in-my-way look. Something like this. But when I first saw his Sonic 3 idol sprite, to me it kind of looked like... Uh, this. He goes from, I'm taking down that Eggman and anything in my way, to, let's go stop that mean old Eggman! Like I said, nothing to do with the gameplay. And the same thing is basically true for the music. That's really more of a personal taste. Sonic 3 just felt short and easy. It's definitely shorter when compared to the first two games, because it only has six zones, and only two acts in each one. But when I say easy... Look, when I was a kid, I don't think I ever beat Sonic 1 and Sonic 2. At least not without using that level select cheat. With Sonic 3, I beat that in a rental. I don't know if it was because I had the save system, or just because I could actually beat it, but it just felt a lot easier than those games. Maybe if it didn't have the save system, which is a good idea on paper, but for a game this short, it didn't feel like it really needed it. It had a lot of great improvements to it, but there was just no levels I wanted to go back and play. Then about eight months later that same year, another Sonic game comes out called Sonic & Knuckles, which is apparently continuing the story of Sonic 3. I always wondered why it wasn't called Sonic 4, but back then I didn't even know this game existed until I saw a demo of it at Best Buy, and even then I didn't pick it up or even rent it. Why? Well, I can't exactly remember, but I think I was, um, er, preoccupied at the time. So I didn't play this one until I got it for the Sonic Mega Collection on the GameCube, and I'll admit, I missed out on this one. As mentioned earlier, the story basically continues where Sonic 3 left off, and Eggman wants to rebuild the Death Egg AGAIN. You'd think he'd add some new attachments to it or something, but, eh, whatever. This time, Tails is not a playable character. Instead, you can play as Knuckles. You can jump and spin dash too, but he can glide, climb up walls, and break through areas that Sonic can't. Although that drop in mid-air momentum when you cancel the glide kind of bugs me. The gameplay is basically the exact same as Sonic 3, only there are two more bonus stages that I think are random as to which one you go to, there is no save system, and no multiplayer mode. Thankfully, you do not go through the same areas as you did in Sonic 3. All the zones in this one are completely new. Unlike Sonic 3, these stages are vastly more difficult and are actually more enjoyable because of it. In my opinion, anyway. Mushroom Hill has mushrooms to bounce on and pulleys. Flying Battery is just plain crazy. Sandopolis is hated by mostly anyone who plays it because of the ghost chases, looping sandslide, and time traps in the second act. Lava Reef has lava. Hidden Palace has a showdown and is used to tell the story. Sky Sanctuary has high air platforming and will make you repeat a section if you miss and the Death Egg has gravity sections and loop-de-loops that can make you dizzy. In a good way. While some of the zones still have useless gimmicks such as pulleys that do the work of a spring at a slower pace, and the looping sandslide also known as an abomination to game design, it isn't laid on too thick and focuses more on platforming and speed more than anything else, which I'm pretty sure everyone can agree on being a good thing. Knuckles' story ends at the first act of Sky Sanctuary and doesn't have a boss for Lava Reef, or even Hidden Palace. Sonic, on the other hand, does have a boss for Lava Reef, and has a pretty pathetic one at that. 
You can still turn supersonic if you get all the Chaos Emeralds, but he's not the only one. Knuckles can also go super if he gets them as well, but there's a special zone only for supersonic. Of course, what makes this game really shine is that back then it was able to be played with Sonic 3 attached to the game by using the lock-on cartridge feature it had. By doing so, you can now play through all the levels of Sonic, Knuckles, and Tails in both Sonic 3 and Knuckles. And even have a save system! Originally, Sonic 3 was supposed to be these two games together, but couldn't meet the deadlines and added this as a way of apologizing. We're sorry. To make it up to you, please buy this game. There's also another special feature by having both of these games together if you really want it. And trust me, you'll really, really want it. If you collected all the Chaos Emeralds from the Sonic 3 levels, then you can go for the bigger challenge to turn the Emeralds into Super Emeralds. You'll have to play through seven far more difficult bonus stages to get them, but the outcome overshadows that. Plus, you can't go Super anyway if you decide to do this. Once you've cleared all the seven bonus stages, you'll be able to turn into Seizure Sonic! I mean Hyper Sonic! Along with getting images of himself, he can do a double jump in any direction and kill any minor enemies on screen when doing so. Knuckles also has a hyper mode but doesn't cause any ice drain. His new ability is that when he collides into a wall, he kills all the minor enemies on screen. Ahem. <clears throat> kills all minor enemies on screen. That's better. Tails doesn't go hyper but instead gets his own super form with all the natural abilities, plus these four golden flickies will follow him. You could also think of them as the four flickies of the apocalypse. They chase after and destroy any enemy on screen. Boss fights were never this easy. But the lock-on bonus doesn't stop there. When you play through the Sonic 3 levels with Knuckles, you'll be able to go through areas that Sonic couldn't go through. So now it basically gives you an extra layer of depth to the game. And if that wasn't enough for you, if you put Sonic 2 in instead of Sonic 3, you can play as Knuckles in Sonic 2. He can still glide in the air and climb up walls, plus he keeps all the rings after going through a bonus stage, and when you get to another check mark, you don't have to worry about rings. Unless you lost them. And now it's finally time to give a score to these classic games. I'll keep the recapping to a minimum since it would take another 10 minutes to explain my reasons. Sonic 1 is a classic that should be played by anyone who likes platformers or video games in general. 5 out of 5. It's a great game to add to your collection. Sonic 2 focuses more on speed, lets a second person play, and introduces the Spin Dash, Tails, and Super Sonic. A 5 out of 5. It's a great game to add to your collection. Sonic 3 is... well easy and frustrating without the sense of challenge. If you get Sonic 3, you should get Sonic and Knuckles so you can truly enjoy it. I know people who love this game, and I know people who don't like it. It's not a broken game and it has a lot of special features added into it, but there's just no levels that I want to go back and play. That's just me though. 3 out of 5. Solid rental. Buy it cheap. By itself, Sonic and Knuckles would have been a 4 out of 5, mainly because of Sandopolis, easy boss fights, and is just about as short as Sonic 3, even though the levels can be pretty challenging. But because of its ability to play with the other Sonic games, well, it's hard to argue against innovation that works. A 5 out of 5. It's a great game to add to your collection.